Welcome to the next session on commodity derivatives and uh, risk management. If you recall, in the last session, we started discussing uh, ab different about different aspect of basis uh, risk. So, uh, just to uh, you know uh, recollect, uh, uh, what is uh, basis risk, uh, or what is basis? Basis is defined as the difference between the spot price and the futures price. And uh, <coughs> in case of a contango market, basis is negative, and in case of a backwardation market, basis is positive. And the way basis changes uh, during the contract uh, initiation date and the contract ex uh, contract square up date, uh, that impacts the uh, you know gain or loss of a commodity futures trader. One thing I would like to highlight here at this point of time is that there is a difference between contract squaring of date and contract uh, you know, expiry date. Uh, in case of a contract squaring, a, a squaring of date, it is the date which is decided by the long uh, futures position holder or the short futures position holder. The hedger uh, you know, delivers the underlying or buys the underlying depending upon its, upon its requirement in the cash market position and on the same day it would like to square up its open position irrespective of whether that contract is uh, you know uh, coming to a maturity on that day or not. So, maturity date is governed by the exchange however contract squaring of date is decided by the trader depending up, upon its cash market position now with this let's take an uh, you know let's take the example what uh, we uh, we were discussing in the previous uh, class where a uh, soybean oil uh, producer is fearing a price uh, uh, decline and it is in it has entered into a short futures contract to mitigate its price risk. So, uh, the soy oil producer is uh, uh, has entered into a short futures contract on a spot date that is on 22nd uh, April 2016 and he enters into a futures contract which is uh, you know uh, which is going to expire on 20th June 26th. Uh, the spot date on which the uh, soy oil producer has initiated the contract that is 22nd April 2016 and this contract futures contract is going to expire on 20th June and the trader would like to square up its short futures position on 10th June 2016 and on the 10th June 2016 it is in tending to sell the underlying uh, soya oil in the local market let's say um, indoor uh, market it intends to sell at the prevail price prevailing uh, at the indoor market on 10th june 2016 now uh, as we discussed so let me write down so what is a spot uh, spot date spot date is 22nd april 2016 and uh, contract maturity date is 20th June 2016 and contract square squaring up squaring of date is 10th June 2016 so on spot date it has entered into a short futures contract at a price of F0T of 870 rupees. So, uh, this spot date is 22nd April, contract maturity date is 20th June, contract squaring of date is 10th June, short it has taken a short futures contract at a price of 870 rupees per 10 kg. Now, his net receipt from the 
net receipt from both the uh, you know both selling the underlying in the uh, underlying uh, uh, soy oil in the spot market and the uh, margin payment and receipt will be governed by your st plus f0 t minus f t t so uh, f0 t is a futures price prevailing on 20th april and uh, 22nd april f t t is the futures price which is going to prevail on 10th june for a contract which is maturing on 20th june so you have a small t here this is your and this is your so as we know it will be f0 t comma plus st minus f t t so this part we know we call it basis on contract expi uh, contract maturity uh, sorry contract squaring of date so f0 t plus c t now let's take some combination of spot and futures price to understand how uh, what is going to be the net receipt of the uh, of uh, this uh, you know a long cash and short futures position holder so as i mentioned spot date is 22nd april futures price prevailing on this date is 870 spot price prevailing on 865 basis is minus 5 and you have a contract maturity date uh, on 20th june and contract expiry uh, date is sorry contract closing or upset date is 10th june uh, this is the date on which the trader would like to square up its position now let's take different combination of spot futures price which is going to prevail on the uh, contract squaring of date that is 10th june 2016 let's say futures price is 797 and the spot price is 785 so you have uh, basis as minus 12 and how much is going to be the receipt so f0 my plus uh, bt so 870 plus 12 so that is coming to your 858 similarly if uh, the basis is 16 uh, the uh, trader is going to receive uh, 886 both from selling the underlying asset and from the uh, futures market if uh, the uh, if the uh, basis is minus 10 its receipt is going to be 860 basis is going to be 10 it is receipt is going to be 870 if basis is 19 its uh, receipt is going to be 889 one thing i would like to highlight here is that this is a hypothetical situation where you have basis as zero before the contract maturity this is not normally happens because mm, you know uh, because uh, before the contract maturity there will be some difference in the spot and futures price which will factor in the cost of carry so uh, just analyzing the you know uh, price variation 858 to 889 you can see that the future uh, the total receipt of the long asset short futures holder can vary depending upon how the basis is changing now let's now let's go back to our slide so here i have given an exercise to all of you in your spare time please try out that uh, Uh, it's exactly a replication of the exercise for uh, long cash and short futures that is uh, what is a a black paper uh, producer is fearing price decline and he it would uh, like to enter into the short futures position and you have a different combination of spot futures position is given a spot and futures price is given uh for the date in which he would like to square up its contract that is on 11th uh, april 2016 and uh, uh, based on this information try to find out what is going to be the net receipt of the uh, hedger that is long asset and the short futures position holder 
Now similarly going back to uh, the reverse side uh, that is long hedger, a party who is short on asset or party who is going to buy the asset at a later point of time and he is fearing price is going to go up. To mitigate that risk, uh, it, it, is, uh, it has entered into a long futures contract. In that case, total payment is going to be ST plus F0 minus FT, it is so same as your F0T plus BT. But only difference which you have to uh, you know remember is that in case of a, a long asset short futures position holder that is total receipt but in case of a short asset and long futures position holder it is total payment. Now let us uh, uh, you know let us uh, spend couple of time minutes understanding uh, how basis risk affects the long hedger. So you have uh, let us say a copper manufacturer, copper ware manufacturer based at Delhi, uh, New Delhi, India. It requires uh, around 6 metric ton of uh, mixed copper scrap. It buys copper scraps from different, you know, uh, uh, different parties and uh, it, uh, you know, it uses this copper scrap to prepare, uh, manufacture copper ware. So he, what is his fear? His fear is that copper price is going to go up. Of course, at this point of time, this is not a very valid fear considering, uh, you know, all base metal prices are mm, almost uh, at a very, very low label. So, um, so suppose had it been a situation where he's uh, he's anticipating the copper price to go up. And uh, when copper price goes up, his copper future uh, copper uh, scrap prices also go uh, goes up. So unless he does something, uh, he would be ending up buying uh, this copper scrap at a late, uh, at a higher price. <coughs> and because copper scrap futures contract is not available in the market, he is mitigating that risk with the uh, copper. Uh, copper futures contract which is uh, listed at uh, multi commodity exchange. So uh, what is the spot date? Uh, spot date is uh, 13th uh, May 2006. Um, so on the spot date is 3rd April 2016 and uh, would like to square up, uh, up its position before the contract maturity date. That is, he would like to square up its position on 13th May 2016. So exactly the same, uh, you know, discussion what I we had done. So <coughs> this is an example of a short cash and long futures. Uh, so the uh, copper manufacturer, copper ware manufacturer, is short on cash uh, commodity on short on underlying, and it would like to mitigate uh, that price risk by entering into a long futures. So you have, uh, so what is the spot date? Spot date uh, is 3rd April and uh, it would like to square up its con um, con uh, open position on 13th May. Contract maturity date is 25th May and what is the future price prevailing? 309, what is the spot uh, price prevailing? 317.7. So it is a um, basis is positive, so in indicating it is a backwardation market. Now depending upon the change basis, if you see he, he this copper uh, you know produce uh, copper ware manufacture end of paying something from 317 to uh, 289 from a high price of 324 to a low uh, price of 300 is 289. So this variability in the total payment uh, or total receipt is uh, what is defined as the basis risk. So with this uh, you know discussion we come to an end on uh, what is our uh, you know understanding of basis risk. Let me repeat. Uh, that in case of a, a forward contract, uh, the counterparties are exposed to credit risk uh, or counterparty risk. In case of a futures contract, uh, the counterparty risk is not there. However, they are exposed to another kind of a 
uh, you know risk which is known as your basis risk in uh, and how uh, does a basis risk affects uh, 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 this uh, put, uh, futures position holder they may end up pay a paying a very high price or low price depending upon how the basis has changed from the contract initiation date to contract squaring up date so uh, uh, to summarize uh, what we have discussed if basis strengthens that is from um, less positive to more positive or from more negative to less negative then a short futures position holder gains and a long future position holder in, uh, you know in losses uh, he incurs loss and vice versa if basis weakens that is uh, from more positive to less positive or from less negative to more negative then in that case the uh, the short futures position holder incurs loss and the long position holder benefits from the futures contract it may take some time for each of you those who are you know getting exposed to these concepts for the first time however if you you know spend couple of uh, minutes or uh, you know spend a little more understanding this concept this will be pretty clear to each of you now uh, let's why uh, you know why basis risk arises or uh, what are the different types of basis risk one is your we have already explained that is called your calendar basis risk so the reason for basis risk emanating from the or uh, uh, why the basis risk arises is the fact that the day traders would like to square up their position is different than the contract maturity date if all traders would like to square up their you know position on the contract maturity date then the traders will not be exposed to the basis risk similarly locational basis risk what is a locational basis risk the spot price suppose i uh, buy the i uh, a trader buys the underlying uh, commodity from one market and he is able to hedge that price risk for a you know con uh, with a contract which is delivered in a another market the delivery location is another market so depending upon the tax uh, difference in taxes and different uh, difference uh, difference in local supply demand aspect you can have uh, you know the spot price and futures price uh, can diverge uh, from each other giving rise to locational basis risk and the third uh, type of basis risk is your uh, product or quality basis risk as we discussed in the previous uh, you know example of a copper uh, ware manufacturer who is buying copper scrap because there is no futures contract available for copper scrap he, he is entering into a uh, you know he is entering into futures contract for copper uh, which has got uh, you know as per the mcx uh, uh, contract specification these are electrolyte copper as per b115 specification so uh, this daily based copper ware manufacturer is uh, you know Uh, hedging is price risk with a different quality uh, uh, you know different quality underlying and it's the price movement of the spot commodity may be different from the price movement of the futures contract because of the quality difference also at this point of time i would like to uh, discuss uh, one interesting aspect Uh, a commodity can be available or a commodity can be produced uh, with very very varying quality so from a very poor quality to a very good quality now when it comes to quality specification which is given in black and white terms in a contract specification uh, as per the you know um, as per a commodity exchange how does a commodity exchange goes about deciding which quality specification it should uh, mention in in its uh, contract because uh, you know 
as we discussed quality uh, specification could be quite uh, uh, different uh, from a very low quality specification to a very very pure form of a commodity um, with a very high uh, you know rigid uh, uh, standards for quality the answer to uh, this question is normally exchanges offer a uh, contracts on fair average quality that is known as fac so the exchanges uh, go and meet with commodity producers commodity consumers and they try to uh, judge which kind of a quality specifications are predominantly consumed or produced by majority of uh, you know uh, physical operators that uh, forms the basis of the uh, you know fair average quality because if exchange goes ahead and makes a contract specification with very very rigid uh, quality standard then may not be many uh, you know traders who would be interested into buying uh, this particular uh, uh, many traders would not be interested in entering into futures contract with that kind of a quality specification because their quality requirement will be different than what has been mentioned so uh, to summarize normally exchanges go and find out what is the average uh, quality which is predominantly consumed and produced by the you know market participants or commodity uh, producers consumer and that forms the basis for the con uh, quality specification in a uh, contract which is given by the exchanges now at this point of time i would like to uh, uh you know discuss little more on uh, hedging aspect price risk of producer or manufacturer who are long on the asset uh, can be hedged with short futures contract on the same commodity price risk of consumers can be hedged with by long futures however futures contract on different underlying are limited so a hedger may not have futures contract available on the same underlying or may have contracts available uh, on the same commodity but for a different quality let's uh, take an example of uh, you know situation where you uh, a, let's say a farmer is producing a particular um, cereal uh, or a commodity for which uh, there is no futures contract listed in any of the exchanges now how does that commodity producer or the farmer mitigate its risk so uh, there is a way out so a trader or a farmer can mitigate this uh, price risk associated with own uh, with the product uh, agricultural product it is producing by entering into a futures contract for another commodity which is very closely related to the Uh, commodity the farmer is producing let's say or when we are using the word uh, closely related means the price movement of both commodities should be similar or they must be highly correlated commodity the price uh, series must be moving in tandem with each other so let's take an example in indian case like you have barley uh, you know barley contracts many many uh, uh, many uh, farmers produce bajra but bajra uh, contracts are uh, not available for trading or it was not available for trading in the commodity exchanges for till couple of years ago so right now these are available let's go with the assumption that let's if bajra contracts is not available and a bajra producer would like to mitigate its risk how it would be able to go ahead and find out uh, which commodities um, uh, can be used as a uh, uh, which commodity contracts can be used uh, to risk uh, hedge its own price risk so this brings to our uh, discussion on some of a like cross hedge so what is a cross hedge the hedger takes futures position in a different commodity which is positively related to the commodity underlying uh, of the hedger so um, 
in case of a cross hedge you uh, do not uh, the exact commodity is not listed but you find out another commodity which is closely related with the commodity you are producing or consuming and use that other commodity which is already listed in the exchange to mitigate your own price risk however uh, in case of a cross hedge it gives rise to a higher basis risk so uh, how exactly uh, you know uh, how this higher basis risk emanates we will discuss little later so I, at this point of time i would like to share a interesting article on uh, cross hedge and uh, uh, article which is prepared by chicago mercantile exchange so uh, this particular document uh, is uh, i have downloaded from if you can see this is the chicago mercantile exchange website <coughs> so you have the title of the uh, you know document is cross hedge effect effectiveness of cme group contracts on agricultural commodities so this uh, you know document shows how sorghum producers can use uh, corn futures contract for mitigating its uh, price risk similarly you have um, Uh, sunflower seed map producers can mitigate uh, this uh, price risk of sunflower seed with soya bean oil contract so this document is a very interesting document so if you are interested to learn more about cross hedging and how uh, you know producer or consumer will be able to identify which uh, commodities or which set of commodity contracts can be used to Uh, mitigate the price risk this is an interesting article you can spend some time uh, and read it now let's go to our discussion of how this cross hedge has a higher basis risk now let's go to uh, uh, let uh, now let's go to our discussion on uh, bajra so you have let's say a farmer is producing uh, bajra and bajra contracts are not listed for uh, uh, bajra futures contracts are not listed in a commodity exchange so it is it uh, does some uh, you know basic correlation analysis of price of bajra and the wheat uh, prices and it found out that both prices are closely related uh, or closely correlated so it can safely use the wheat futures contract uh, listed in commodity exchanges to mitigate its own price risk so uh, let's uh, you know spend couple of minutes what is uh, mentioned here you have a spot price s0 wheat is the spot price prevailing on the contract initiation date a uh, spot price bajra uh, s0 bajra is the spot price of bajra on the uh, contract initiation date uh, f0 is the wheat futures price on contract initiation date st is the wheat uh, spot price on contract squaring up date st bajra is the spot price uh, of bajra on contract squaring up date ft is the future price of wheat on the contract offset date and accordingly you have two uh, basis uh, based on the price difference between spot price of wheat and futures price of wheat on the contract initiation date and the contract expiry date so the contract offset date so you have b0 and bp now let's go to our understanding of how cross hedge gives rise to added uh, you know basis risk so uh, so this total receipt total receipt is going to be st bajra plus f0 wheat minus ft wheat with this let me add up st bajra i am just shortening of f0 wheat minus f t wheat plus s t wheat minus f s t wheat so adding up the same term and subtracting the same term should not be make any difference 
now what we will be doing so I will be F 0 wheat I bring it to left side and I make S T wheat this term I bring it here minus F T wheat this is the third term then I take this term the first term S T B minus S T W so if you recall this is the futures price of wheat on contract initiation date this is the B T wheat that is basis wheat basis prevailing on the contract squaring up date plus the price difference between price difference between spot price difference between bajra and wheat on day t so if you recall so on day t if you recall this component was earlier there ft plus bt so you have f f t uh, f f f0 uh, wheat plus bt wheat we have a now a added component called price difference between bajra uh, and wheat on day t so uh, in case of a crosshairs as we discussed that uh, many times uh, all commodity contracts are not available uh, for uh, futures contract on all commodities are not available and if it uh, you know producer or consumer would like to mitigate its price risk it can identify a commodity which is closely related to the commodity it, in, it intends to hedge and uh, using a cross hedge it will be able to mitigate uh, the price risk however it is still exposed to the basis risk like any other uh, commodity uh, hedger using futures contract however in case of a cross hedge besides uh, you know the regular basis risk it is also exposed to another kind of risk which is the price difference between uh, the uh, both the contract the commodity uh, uh, which he is owning or uh, you know which he is um, producing or con consuming and the commodity spot price uh, for which uh, he has gone ahead uh, and bought or sold the futures contract. So, the spot price difference between both commodity is going to be an added risk in case of a cross hedge. So, this brings an end to our discussion on uh, uh, the dif uh, different aspect of basis risk and uh, I am looking forward to meeting you all in the next session where we will be discussing about hedge ratio, minimum variance hedge ratio and the beta hedge ratio and thank you all of you.